Competition law is a law that regulates anti-competitive conduct by companies, promotes and maintains market competition by ensuring level playing field. And it is also described as a law which makes the market work for consumers. As the preamble of the Indian competition law indicates, it has three main pillars which outline the objectives of the CCI, the agency created to achieve them. First, to prevent practices having adverse effect on competition to promote and sustain competition in markets. Second, to protect the interest of consumers. And third is to ensure freedom of trade carried on by other participants in markets in India. If we look at the history of the evolution of our competition law, after independence in 1947, the emphasis was given on prevention of concentration of economic power, development of a socialistic society, and prevention of monopolies, and MRTP Act was created. However, as we migrated to a market economy in 1991, market regulation warranted a new act, but for which free market could result in exploitation of consumers and exclusion of new players. As the nature of the business of participants in the markets changes, and so does the economy, so does the contours of the market regulation to achieve the main objectives outlined above, the three main objectives. In the new age economy, characteristics of the markets are changing with digitization, infusion of technology, and innovation. To the extent these contribute to the static and dynamic efficiencies in economy and conform to the above three yardsticks, there may not be any problem. However, sometimes they become epicenters of entrenched and unchecked dominance. Also, in a digital economy, market operations may result in accumulation of big data with the companies, which may not only result, but also distort market equilibrium and give undue advantage and provide hindrance for the new entrants. However, the tools of the 2000 Act, which have served us very well till today, may also need some tweaking wherever they are found insufficient. And for this purpose, there was a competition law review committee which recommended a few amendments and a bill was drafted, which is pending before the parliament. In the new age economy, there are developments in innovations like artificial intelligence, which may tend to suggest conduct of predetermined nature affecting the competitive nature of the market. AI technology, while intricately intertwined with businesses today, is currently offering potential challenges to the competitive market and poses threats like consumer infidelity. These may facilitate algorithmic collusions, which could be of various kinds like messenger, where humans use computers and IT environment to execute cartels, hub and spoke, where a single algorithm is used to determine prices by numerous users, and the predictable agent where pricing algorithms act as agents and continuously adjust to each other's prices and markets. In other words, algorithm enhanced conscious parallelism. There could also be a digital eye where artificial intelligence is operating in enhanced market transparency leads to an anti-competitive outcome. In the OTT segment, in the world of entertainment, we see rising OTT platforms like Netflix, Amazon Prime, Disney Hotstar, etc. And there are competition concerns in them also. If we analyze some of them, we'll find some competition law issues whereby they use their dominant position in one relevant market 
to enter into other relevant market and also bundle applications, et cetera. They witnessed a great surge during the pandemic. Like for example, Disney acquired Hotstar in 2019 through a $71.3 billion deal. Amazon entered into the OTT sector via Amazon Prime. Airtel, being a telecom company, it released Airtel Xtreme, which is a OTT platform. Vodafone Idea also into VI movies and TV OTT platform, etc. The other segment mentioned in the dashboard, blockchain and competition regulation, I'm aware that you will be discussing these things in more detail later, but I thought I'll briefly give a glimpse into some of these aspects as far as they affect the competition landscape in the market. In the block, blockchain and competition regulation, it, uh, blockchain generally refers to a distributed ledger technology that stores information in blocks on several nodes without the control of a central authority or the interference of intermediaries. The transactions in a blockchain take place with the consent of each node without the control of a central governing entity and such transactions are immutable, contributing to the trustworthiness of blockchains. These characteristics of blockchains make them the preferred mode of transaction for numerous purposes, including the spheres of finance, cryptocurrency, which is much in news these days, healthcare industry, supply chains, etc. Decentralization and consequent transparency can be effective in promoting competition as consumers are provided with greater information resulting in effective transactions. However, it is more likely that the availability of such an impactful amount of information could result in adoption of anti-competitive practices as it could abet the exchange of commercially sensitive information and consequential unlawful concert between various parties. Also in permissionless blockchains, due to anonymity, it will be tough for regulators to trace the transaction and parties involved. As blockchains use a distributed ledger system, every node can have access to commercially sensitive information, including prices, discounts, production, sales, cost, turnover price, and management related plans and strategies, investments among strategy, uh, other strategic information. As held out by the CCI in other cases, like Builders Association of India versus Cement Association of India, et cetera, and by the courts, availability of commercially sensitive information could result in anti-competitive outcomes. CCI has also released a paper on blockchain and competition law in collaboration with Ernst & Young, and I would strongly recommend the uh, participants today to have a look at this is available on Google. The other aspect mentioned in the dashboard smart contract is uh, again something where there could be competition concerns. The use of smart contracts in blockchains can prove to be effective tools of collusion and thereby raise significant anti-competitive concerns. Smart contracts are self-executed digital contracts which are automatically executed based on the fulfillment of given contingencies without the element of human intervention. Just to give you an example, Delhi Metro smart cards, where recently SBI, State Bank of India, collaborated with DMRC, Delhi Metro Railway Corporation, to introduce smart credit cards, which can serve dual purpose to pay metro fares and credit card, which strictly speaking could be a tie-in arrangement. The CCI in the case of Hyundai Motor Company and Kia Motors ruled that mere use of algorithm is not discriminatory in nature, but such algorithm means could be used to promote anti-competitive behavior in the relevant market. To regulate blockchain and smart contracts, violation of competition law, probably there may be need 
to expand the ambit of section three to regulate the use of algorithms. There could also be non-price factors in determining abuse of dominance by the CCI. CCI had released a report on market study on telecom sector, wherein it discussed data privacy and competition and recognized privacy as a competitive factor. The use of such data without the prior consent of the users undermines consumers' privacy. Privacy concerns arising in competition law have also been recognized in the European Union, Article 20 of their General Data Protection Regulation, GDPR, which ensures data protection by limiting processing of data without the consent of the giver. In India, we have our personal data protection bill coming before the parliament expected to be discussed in this parliament, which is uh, uh, starting soon tomorrow. In exclusive dealing agreements, the customers are tied up in a contractual obligation wherein they are required to purchase specific goods or services exclusively from a particular supplier for a particular period of time. The time duration can vary from case to case. This kind of obligation prevents customers from exploring other suppliers. And this results in the creation of barriers to the competitors of the undertaking to enter into the market and provide service to the customers. We all know that there are competition issues in e-commerce sector which relate to gatekeeping, unfair contractual terms and exclusive agreements, etc. According to the Indian e-commerce industry report by Brand Equity Foundation, the number of internet users in India have increased from 45 crores in 2017 to 66 crores in 2019 and expected to go up to 82 crores this year. There are also other aspects which need attention like intersection of competition law with other areas of law, intellectual property rights and competition law, for example. Section 3.5 of the Competition Act describes it, the interface of the Competition Law with Copyright Act, Patent Act, Trade Merchandise Act, etc., etc. Trademark and patents give the holders exclusive right to use them which in due course of time may act in anti-competitive way and breach competition law principles. Uh, in Amir Khan Production Private Limited versus DGCCI, the Bombay High Court has ruled that the Competition Commission of India has jurisdiction to look into the matter of competition and IPR. There have been other cases like Valle, Peruman and so on, where trademark owner misused the trademark by manipulating and distorting which amounts to unfair trade practices of trademark. The court, while taking into consideration the competition policy of India, stated that all kinds of intellectual property have the potential to infringe the competition. There are aspects like the friend terms, the fair and uh, 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 reasonable and non-discriminatory ter terms, which can govern the usage of such intellectual property assets. In Kingfisher versus the CCI, the court held that section 3.5 does not limit the right of the holder of IP rights to sue for infringement of copyright and trademark, etc. CCI has conf been conferred a power to deal with all that cases, all such cases which uh, come before the copyright board. Thus competition law does put a bar and regulation on the application of the other law. In FIKI Multiplex Association versus United Producers, it has been held that copyright holder is, doesn't have an absolute right, but it's a statutory right. And European courts of justice have also held that objective of IPR is to encourage innovation in all areas and further provide commercial gain. I'm conscious of the fact that I'm running out of the time and therefore I would uh, restrict my remarks to just a few main observation that uh, it is important that uh, in the charging of royalty, there is a reasonableness. And if it is very high, 
it will also directly contradict the competition law as has been held by the Supreme Court in Entertainment Network India Limited versus Super Cassette because we have to also ensure that competition prevails in the market. One uh, immediate uh, matter which comes to my mind is compulsory licensing of patents as needed in the case of COVID vaccines. For COVID, some of these major uh, um, pharma companies, while they have come up with COVID vaccines, it is felt that there should be uh, compulsory licensing or voluntary licensing uh, so that there could be other manufacturers which, have, which may come. Finally, I would uh, spend a few minutes to mention about the competition law amendment bill, which uh, is now before the parliament. And there, some of these matters would come up for discussion or the amendments and tweaking in the competition law, the interface with the other laws, the cyber laws, the, the formulation of the data protection and competition law, the matters relating to cross-border mergers and worldwide cartels. And uh, in the mergers and acquisitions, the competition law takes care of the need of attracting investments into uh, the country and uh, wherever needed in the regulations, they have done uh, tweaking in the, uh, in the various forms. Uh, in the um, competition amendment bill, one important factor which has uh, been taken care of on the recommendations of CLRC is settlement and commitment where it would be possible to make sure that uh, parties can carry out uh, changes in their business practices in the market so that competition is uh, ensured. And one of the final factors in your dashboard was on the competition compliance in COVID-19. CCI has been very conscious about it and they have come up uh, with their uh, uh, regulation, with the advisory note where they permitted a number of activities which could not be otherwise permissible. So friends, it has been such a great pleasure talking to you today. And uh, with, with these words, uh, let me uh, once again thank you for uh, giving me this opportunity and, uh, uh, and inaugurate this conference. Uh, my best wishes to the students and my greetings to the participants. Have a nice day. Thank you very much.